okay, outcomes. Uh, you know, what, what, do you, what, how, what do I think is going to happen here? Uh, I think there's maybe four broad outcomes. Uh, you know, one is that the regime forces will basically weaken over time and dissolve and just sort of fade away, quit fighting, and the rebels will win that, that fight. Uh, the, the, the strain of the battle, the attrition, and so on, will, will eventually cause the army not so much to be defeated in one big climatic battle, uh, but just sort of to break and, and uh, dissolve. I think a second outcome, and, that, and just try to put a time frame in it, I think that's weeks to maybe a couple months away, you know, if, in, in my estimate, okay? Uh, a second outcome, I think, is that the regime could just break all of a sudden, like literally overnight. And, you know, this could be an every man for himself in the double take the hindmost situation, right? That they, they just wake up one morning and say, we're losing, we can't win, and we got to save ourselves. I think that's one possibility. Uh, the other possibility within that kind of a scenario is that there's a, an internal coup. They, you know, the people within the regime act to get rid of Gaddafi and his, and his closest associates. A third outcome, I think, is, is a true stalemate. And I said, I don't believe this has been a stalemate or um, is a stalemate now. But we, we could get to a, a true stalemate. Uh, that would be, in my mind, a very bad outcome for this uh, war. Uh, both sides could simply, you know, they could fight to a standstill, standstill and, and, and quit. Or, you know, worse maybe of all, some outside group, power, UN, whatever, could impose a ceasefire on the combat and bring it to an end. I, I, as I said, I think that's a very bad outcome. Least likely of all, I, I think, is that the regime actually makes a comeback and, and begins to win again a uh, military and imposes its, its will on, on, on the situation. So how, how to ensure, I think, that the, um, the uh, rebels win uh, sooner or rather than later? Uh, I think there's some things that could be done, and you know, there isn't any magic here. More NATO air power, I think, applied more aggressively would help. I think uh, the rebels could be armed better, um, given more key types of weapon systems. Uh, they could be given better training, uh, you know, more, more effective training maybe. Uh, finance them, uh, giving, give them the economic resources uh, they need, and recognize them. Give them uh, formal recognition. All these things would work against either the, the political will of, of the uh, opposition or the regime or against their, they're actually against them in a military sense. Okay, so just, just uh, you know, conclude with a couple of implications, observations uh, type, uh, type of things. You know, I, I, I would say that, you know, a people in arms is an awesome uh, thing, right, but it's not in, invincible. Uh, if it hadn't been for the in intervention in, on the 18th, 19th of March by U.S. and British and French air power, the rebels probably would have lost Benghazi and probably would have been defeated in a military sense uh, by, by the regime. I think uh, in, in the lesson in, in this is you know, that Gaddafi's buffoonery and antics and the image of him as some kind of weird you know, creature you know, misled uh, people about the, the toughness of the regime. You know, this actually turned out to be quite a tough uh, group of people and, and quite capable. So there's, you know, the lesson for me anyway is don't underestimate the, uh, the leadership of, the, of the, these regimes. Um, a regime that retains its uh, internal cohesion and military cohesion is a very formidable and tough opponent for any uh, rebel group, um, even, even one with uh, some level of external uh, uh, intervention. I think another lesson is that limited, uh, low-risk military information is a slow uh, solution at best. Uh, the non-decisive application of military power in the Libyan sense uh, is dragging the conflict on and increasing uh, risk, uh, risk to the people. A couple of comments on the, on the decision to intervene uh, itself. Um, in my mind, uh, there are always good reasons not to act. You know, there's always going to be uncertainty about who the, the, you know, the opposition is, about the risks involved, about insert, you know, just how, un, you know, what's going on in the situation. Those are all, you know, reasons not to take action. Uh, the, an incremental limited response allows time for the, the, um, the regime to adapt, right? One, if the regime had been hit by lots of military force early on, um, in, by means of external information, it probably wouldn't have been able to adapt to the situation as well as it has. 
So uh, in my mind, a robust and early response by the U.S. and its allies and or, or NATO probably would have brought this thing to a conclusion well before for now. Uh, so that's, um, those are my, my comments on the situation. Um, I'll now uh, turn it over. Paul. Once again, uh, when Ambassador Argely gets here, uh, he will be joining us, I understand, but uh, we're going to go ahead and have Paul speak now because uh, he isn't here yet. His speech is still going on. Speech is still going on. Okay, well, uh, thanks for coming out. Um, I'm going to be well under my time limit, I think, because I expect most of you were more interested in hearing Ambassador Algerly, who's personally involved in these things, rather than uh, someone who's just commenting on them from afar. And you've gotten a pretty detailed uh, uh, accounting from Jeff in terms of the, uh, the ins and outs of the military situation. I'm going to make some observations more about what went into uh, or what should have gone into the decision-making of uh, the external actors, us and the Europeans and so on. But well, let me preface that, since some of what I'm going to say is going to sound somewhat skeptical, uh, preface that by expressing uh, admiration <coughs> for uh, the courage of those who are involved in this rebellion, including, uh, no doubt, Ambassador Algeli himself. We've seen a lot of people uh, in very many, very different ways, either physically or politically, um, show an awful lot of courage and I would take my hats off to them. That said, um, if we look at the decisions that were made with regard to the external intervention, this is almost a case study in how not to make a decision. I mean, as far as uh, uh, the whole NATO operation was concerned, you know, this was mainly a British-French impetus. As you know, there was a lot of uh, resistance by the Germans and others. And here in the United States, it seemed to be uh, there were divisions within the U.S. administration with the, um, those who went out being those who made the humanitarian argument that there was a, uh, a bloodbath uh, in, in the making in the East. If we didn't intervene, we can discuss that if you want to debate it. But there was always from the beginning uh, some confusion about just what the goal was. Uh, officially, as far as the U.S. was concerned, it still has been about protecting civilians. Uh, but it clearly has become one of regime change. And it became that even though there never was, there seemed to never have been, uh, the kind of full policy process back here in the United States and full debate about whether a U.S. commitment with all that implied in terms of resources and risks um, was the right thing to do on behalf of overthrowing this particular dictator as opposed to other dictators in that region or any, anyone else. Um, that, in my view, is, you know, is not the way to go about making such decisions. Now, there was another set of considerations that I'll admit is a bit of a digression from the topic of what's next for Libya, but I think uh, it's an important consideration, and that is what lessons were sent to other authoritarian regimes. Uh, because we have to recall, this was one with which we and the British had struck a deal back in 2003, after prolonged negotiations, in which Gaddafi gave up his unconventional weapons program and cemented his turn away from being a sponsor of terrorism to being a partner in fighting against terrorism. Uh, that was a not insignificant accomplishment for U.S. diplomacy. Obviously, the quid pro quo was uh, we accept that regime as a legitimate player, which of course we did with regard to restoring diplomatic relations and so on, a legitimate player in the international system. And now, certainly from the point of view of either Gaddafi or someone who can put himself in Gaddafi's shoes, we reneged totally on that. And the lessons have been drawn, among others, very explicitly by the North Koreans, whose foreign ministry uh, said a couple of weeks back... Um, we're not going to make the same mistake as Gaddafi. We're going to hold on to everything we've got when it comes to nuclear weapons and whatnot. Uh, we're not going to be snookered by the Americans 